I'll welcome you to where I find my ships, where I try to help you learn a little bit more about some of the base ships in Starfield, and most importantly, some methods on how to get them. And today, we're going to be looking at the vessel that has the highest damage output in all of Starfield. It's none other than the Ecliptic Claymore Mark III. Often considered a general use ship, but for me, given the weapons on it, I would call this a destroyer class or a, a cruiser class, as it packs a whopping punch, but will also need support given its weapon selection. That's why it's a perfect ship when it has support from the ecliptic cutlass or cutter soletto and you get the picture it's a hard hitting reasonably fast decently hulled ship belongs to the ecliptic faction it's gonna be one of the most common ships you'll probably find landing on planets other than those shitty class a ships it's very common it's trickier to get the mark 3 and we'll go into how to get that soon but what makes the ecliptic claymore mark 3 so scary well it has the highest damage output and all of Starfield coming in at 478. The reason for such a high damage output is it comes with the Particle Obliterator 250M and the CE-59 Missile Launcher. Let's take a look at these weapons. It's one of the highlights to the Ecliptic Claymore Mark III. And we'll start off with the Obliterator 250 MEV Alpha Turret. This is an auto turret. It's a particle weapon, it means it has superb range and very intense hull damage and shield damage. Literator will, will require Starship Design Rank 4. It is also the second most expensive particle weapon you can attach to your ship with a level unlock of 60. We're looking at one of the best particle weapons you can attach to your ship. The only downside is, is that you can only put three of these on your vessel because it does require a power of four. So you only have 12 bars. So if you wanted to put max power, you can only put three of these bad boys on. That's still very good because they are crazy, crazy strong. And they pack a punch. You can put this on very hard. You'll still see that health bar go down quite quickly with these. Now the Obliterator 250 MEV Auto Turret also has one of the highest shield and hull DPS. The other really extreme factor, which is really cool, and why it's so expensive is that the obliterator 250 alpha turret has the most highest shield and hull damage per second rate at 129 which is really crazy so that's a 129 damage per second these bad boys can punch out the second weapon the claymore mark 3 has is the ce-59 missile launcher the ce-59 is the second most expensive missile launcher you can purchase starship design rank 3 it costs 25,200 credit it has a level unlock of 49 and one of the cool things you can do with the ce-59 that you can attach four of them to your ship because they only require a power of three so you can put on four which is what i like to do giving a combined shield and hull damage of 612 in missile launches they have fantastic range at 4000 and it's just a neat little package that is devastating you get four of the ce-59 and you start launching in at ships it's going to be super quick because of that high hull and shield damage it's just brutal. Now let's take a look at some of the other components and factors with the Claymore Mark III. So we'll start off with the engines. So the Claymore Mark III has four engines in total and it's equipped with two of the worst engines in the whole game, which is the White Dwarf 1000 engine, the 3500 credits, and we won't spend any more time on that because it's just one of the basic starter engines that you can get. But it is interesting that they've included this. You could upgrade this to give more maneuverability and probably a better top speed as well. But I do like how they have uh, designed the double engine. It's cool that you have one big main engine and then a little side engine. I do like that, it's pretty cool. More unique to the Claymore. The main engine is the Supernova 2200, one of the top 10 engines you can get in the game. It has a level unlock of 57. It requires Starship design, rank four. Cool thing about the Supernova is that you can attach four of them to your ship, which would give a combined thrust of 103,000 roughly, which is the third highest potential thrust for pretty much all of Starfield. Now it's not cheap, it's 42,000 per engine, but it has a really slick design. I'm feeding over to the reactor. Claymore Mark III has the Fuser DC-403 reactor. This is a weapon of a reactor. It's a rank 4 Starship design. Obviously, you need your pilot in rank 4. It generates 38 power. It has a repair rate of 5.75 with a health of 115. Third most expensive reactor in all the game at 77,300 credits with a level unlock of 49. This is one of the top five reactors you can get in the game, which allows for a lot of weapon upgrades and potential things you can do with the Claymore Mark III. Moving on to the grav drive, we've got the Apollo GV300. It requires Starship Design Rank 4, pretty much the second best grav drive you can get in Starfield. 
has a max power of 11, a jump thrust of 50, a health of 288, and a huge price tag of 105,000 with a level unlock of 52. This will give you a jump range of 30. So again, a really good grab drive to start off with. Don't ever need to upgrade this thing. In fact, in some situations, you might even want to downgrade. <laughs> but it's top of the class. Next, we have the shield, which is the Assurance SG-3000 shield generator. This is a Starship design of rank 3 with a level unlock of 49. Definitely not a bad shield. It has a health of 1,190 to 10 bar shield as the regeneration rate of 5% and a value of 45,200. So it's still a top 10 shield. Very good overall. So you're going to be pretty well protected in your Claymore. The other cool thing about the Claymore is that they're pretty much built entirely out of Nova Galactic hubs and parts. It's got that famous Carbot C4 bridge. Really love the look of this. The downside to the Ecliptic Claymore 3 is it has a terrible fuel range at 420. So we've gone over all the ship parts. We've had a good little look. Now let's go into how to get the Claymore Mark 1, 2, and 3. Now we're going to be only focusing on the Mark 3, but just note that this method will be very much applicable to the Mark 1 and 2. So you can use the same process to get the lower versions. However, the Mark 1 and 2 are going to be very common. So you'll find them pretty much anywhere on any moon and most planets. I'll give you some indication on levels so you know when you'll get these ships spawning. To see the Mark 3 for the Claymore, well, I'm going to say is probably... 50 to 60 plus and then you're probably looking at 20 to say 50 for the mark 2 and you should see the mark 1 from the get-go these are just some very rough level indicators you would definitely see it before these levels mentioned but it can be rare you'll start seeing the mark 3 of ships the higher the level you are and they will become more and more common so we're going to go through getting the claymore in orbit and on ground so now we're going to go through exactly what you'll need for both those scenarios so the perks we're going to need to capture the claymore mark 3 we're going to need the piloting rank 4 to pilot class c ships we also need targeting control systems at least rank 1 so we can target the grav drive and engine take those out so we can dock and take the ship by force. Recommendation is to have this as high level as possible to make this process easier. The other thing you're really going to need is ship parts. I suggest you bring a ton of ship parts depending on how you want to play this. I'll give you a couple of suggestions on how you can avoid using ship parts or if you want to farm the XP you can use your ship parts as you take damage. And for capturing the Claymore Mark III on the ground we're only going to need piloting rank 4. We just need to be able to board and fight off the enemies and capture and pilot this ship. The Ecliptic Claymore 3 can be a little tricky, but also quite common. If you want to find it, Orbit, definitely check out Celebre. This is a good system to find them. That's one system. You'll pretty much find the Claymore Mark III in any of the 70 or above systems. So another good place is Four, Fermi, and you can definitely try Archimedes, Hawkins, and you could try Hygens. I should also mention the Masada system is really good to find ecliptic claymore ships in orbit and on ground. So definitely try these strategies in this system as well, as you will find that their home base is in Masada. Basically, all we're going to do is just jump from system to system to system. And we're going to get engaged in a lot of battles. So I don't suggest doing it that way. The way I suggest doing it is making sure you have your settings. So you want to go settings, gameplay, you can have any difficulty you want. I was chopping changing from very easy to hard. It seems to be consistent between the, all the difficulty. So I don't think that matters too much. You want to have save on travel. Quickest way to do this is we get into, we jump to a new planet or moon. We've got the auto save. And what happens, it tends to take about 30 seconds to a minute for the ships to arrive, just like now. Now you have two choices. You can destroy all these ships. You've got plenty of ship parts and you don't need to worry. You can kill these ships, get the XP. That's no worries. But if you don't want to engage in these battles because it's going to take quite some time jumping between moons and planets, what I suggest you do is just load that last autosave. For me, it is it's this one. Okay, so now that we know that we're going to get attacked by Crimson ships, we don't really want to engage in them because we're just looking for the Claymore Mark III. So we'll just jump to another moon in Celebrate and then we'll just keep doing this process until we run into the, for the Claymore Mark III. This method is going to be the quickest because we avoid all the orbital battles now, I've been able to replicate this multiple times. It does take time. It took me about 45 minutes to get it twice. It may take you a lot longer. Depends on how you go with your random events. And if you're not having any luck in Celebrate, then try the Boar system or some of the other systems I mentioned. But you will find it. It just takes some time. Once you find it, you'll be able to dock with it. Very easy to take. There's not too many enemies. The only complication you may find is that when you run into a Claymore Mark III, there might be two or three other ships with it. So you want to target the other ships first, destroy those, and save your game so it's only you and the Claymore 
mark three left just in case you need to come back and you can adjust the difficulty from very easy to very hard depending on what you need so you either don't kill it too quickly or so it doesn't kill you too quickly and that way you should be able to get a claymore mark three in the orbit okay so now we'll look at how to get the ecliptic claymore mark three on the surface of moons or planets now keep in mind you're only going to get the mark three on surface once you're a high enough level could be looking at anywhere from 50 60 70 plus level unless you get very lucky the biggest issue that you're going to find getting the claymore mark three is that a lot of the time the ship's going to be inaccessible because they just tend to drop elliptic troops down and then fly back into orbit or they become dead vessels which means you cannot access them without using console commands that's why it can be good to go to a system like fermi because it does seem to happen a lot Lot less in the higher level systems but it will still happen but for finding it on the surface we will head to masada it's a very good location to find elliptic ships landing more frequently on the surfaces of moons you can pretty much pick any moon in the masada system and just use the save and reload trick until you get the ecliptic claymore mark three now this may take some time because you may find an ecliptic and it may be inaccessible but you then just need to travel to another moon repeat the process of using the save and load till you find an ecliptic claymore mark three that you can access and once you do that it'll be very easy to clear the ship there's not too many troops on it and the good thing is it's very cheap to register the ecliptic claymore the good thing is about the Ecliptic Claymore 3 is that it's reasonably cheap to register. It's only like, say, 55,000 credits. Isn't too bad. Now, a couple of caveats to be able to actually get the Ecliptic Claymore Mark 3 is if you have the wanted trait, you're going to have more, you're going to find more frequently that the Ecliptic Claymore ships are going to be bounty ships, which you can't take, that will take longer. The other caveat is if you have Starborn in orbit or landing, that's going to cause a lot of problems to your spawning, which will make this harder to do. But pretty much this is going to help you get an Ecliptic Claymore Mark 3. I hope you got something out of it. Please like, subscribe and all that jazz. Peace.